Marcus Aurelius famously quoted that you have power over your mind, not over outside events. And once you realize that, you will find strength. Today I appear in front of you and I believe that I have achieved this. Hi, I'm Sushant Devgikar, aka Rani Kohinoor. I'm an actor, singer, performer, drag artist, psychologist, and I also happen to be a transgender person. And this is my adventure. I was born to a middle-class Konkani family in Bandra, Mumbai. My father at the time was uh, an appraising officer with the customs of India, and my mother was a banker. We had a wonderful childhood, but unfortunately, we couldn't spend as much time with our parents. Not to say that they weren't there when we needed them the most, but uh, we were taken care of most of the time by our maternal grandparents, Nana Nani, uh, and we used to call them Amma Papa. Um, they took beautiful care of us. When I say us, my brother and I. Uh, growing up, uh, we were encouraged to participate in sports, um, in the cultural activities at school, singing, dancing, debates, uh, nearly everything. And we were never pressurized to perform exceedingly well in school or top, uh, you know, be the toppers in our class. And uh, because my father said that in my time, I, did, I wasn't a topper, so I don't expect you all to be a topper, in his words. And therefore, we didn't have any false expectations from our parents. Um, that was amazing, I think. Uh, it just made us realize our full potential in whatever we wanted to do. But me being me, I did exceedingly well in everything I touched. So whether it was sports, whether it was cultural activities, basically, and I, I was also pretty good at my curricular activities, which is studies. Um, I, at the time, played 12 sports and I was the sports captain of my school. Uh, I was also a national level swimmer. At one point, I used to, I think, swim for seven hours a day. Uh, and because we needed to, we were competitive swimmers. And, um, you know, I had a couple of records to keep up to, so I had to work really hard uh, back then. And uh, I also won my first ever personality contest in school. And I was Mr. Alien because uh, back then I identified as a boy because I didn't know uh, that I was trans. I didn't uh, identify as a trans person. So I was very different from the other kids in school. Uh, not just the boys, but other kids because I used to love to read about science, mythology. Um, I used to love to watch movies that were actually not supposed to be watched by children because they had the A certificate because of, I think, the sex and the, uh, the the cuss words, but I think that it kind of gave me so much perspective even as, it kind of gave me so much perspective, even though I was young, I saw such beautiful content and I didn't see the sex part of it or I didn't see the A-rated part of it as being A-rated, I think it was just part of life and I think it was great to learn uh, about all of these things. Um, my father also told us that you learn something uh, new every day and uh, that's why he said that even if you don't physically believe you've learned anything new today, pick up the dictionary and learn two new words. So that explains my plethora of words and my vocabulary. Um, you know, I automatically then realized that I was different, I was unique, and I stood out from the other kids. And that's when I realized I didn't have to fit in. Um, and I think I had a wonderful set of friends. They understood me right from when we were kids. They knew that I was not like them, but I was also tough uh, <laughs> because I was a sports person. Uh, they just loved me for the person I was. I loved them because they were my friends regardless of, uh, you know, what my orientation or gender was. They loved me because of my confidence, because I loved them and we shared this beautiful friendship. Um, and then after school, you know, we went, entered college and I think that was the first time I told my best friend then, Ishita, uh, that I was gay. Uh, she still is my best friend. <laughs> because she was not my best friend because I was gay or straight. She was just my best friend because we were friends as human beings. And uh, she told me that I must tell my brother because we were in the same friend circle. And she said that, um, you know what, if he says something, uh, I'm there, I'll whack him if he doesn't accept you the way you are. And I told my brother, initially he was a little perplexed, and then he was like, he hugged me and he said, I'll protect you, just like an older brother would, I guess. 
um, after that, I wanted to tell my parents. I was not ready to tell my parents. That's why I confided in a friend and then my brother. My brother apparently went and told my father that he didn't tell him directly. He insinuated that I attend gay parties and gay events and LGBT pride events. So my father one day just asked me, we were, we were chilling, I was chilling at home and uh, my father, you know, when he used to come back from work, he was very like serious at work and then very chilled out with us at home and he just very in conversation asked me, uh, Sushant, are you gay? And I just looked at him, I didn't want to lie to my father. I, that's one thing our parents have taught us not to lie. Um, and I just looked at him and I said, yes, dad, I am. And then he just looked at me and he said, okay. Um, I just wanted to understand and I wanted to hear it from you. Uh, but I don't care because you're not my straight child or my gay child, you're my child. And I think that was so beautiful. I get emotional even when I speak about it today. Because I think for a kid, for somebody who's growing up uh, in their formative years, this is beautiful uh, for your parent and your father to stand by you. And he said that uh, from today, I think I'll understand you more. I'll read about the community and it's my duty as your father to protect you. And then he asked me that, do you want to tell your mom by yourself or should I tell her? I said, can I tell someone in this family because it's been going from this one to that one to this one to that one. So I was like, can I please tell my mom? So he was like, yeah, if you need any help, you can tell me. Went to my mom. She was watching some very pathetic TV serial and uh, where this woman is turning into some bee and snake and stuff. And I told her, mom, I need to tell you something very important. She's like, yeah, yeah tell me in the break. And I said, uh, mom, it's very life changing. Can I tell you now? So I told my mom, mom, this is something life changing. It's a very important thing that I need to share with you. Um, so she got very annoyed at me and uh, because she's a drama queen and therefore you can see what she has produced. But, uh, and she said, you know what? If this is about you being gay, I already know. And I was like, well, uh, okay. I didn't have any dramatic coming out story and I was like, oh, all right. Uh, but I was very lucky that um, I didn't have to face what a lot of other kids face. Uh, a lot of kids don't have very accepting parents, only on the basis of their gender or their orientation. I think it's very sad. And my parents have taught other parents to love your child regardless of the other characteristics that your child might have. Your child might be short, tall, plus size, dark skin, fair skin, blue eyes, gray eyes doesn't matter, straight, gay, trans, that's your child first. And I think that I'm just lucky uh, to have the parents I have. And, um, you know, so going into college, uh, as I said, it was, it was a little scary for me. Uh, I was a little scared of uh, what other people might say, because I think this is what we've been taught as kids, to feel scared. You know, Log kya kahenge? what will the others say about this? So I was a little scared, but then I realized that my parents are with me. My parents don't have an issue with this. So why should I curb myself? Because our parents taught us to be the best version of ourselves. Our parents taught us to be true to our values, true to our identity and our authenticity. And I think that's what I still hold very close to me. So if somebody's uncomfortable with my existence, I think it's because they're uncomfortable with themselves, not me. I'm, I'm fabulous. Um, so I think that um, that's what I carried forward into my life and um, I always held my mum as my idol and my father as my inspiration and I think I'm, an, I'm a beautiful amalgamation of both of them. Um, uh, going into uh, my vocation, I never chose to be a model, I never chose to be an artist, I always wanted to be a psychologist so that I could help people um, you know, in whatever little way I could. Uh, I went ahead, I finished my bachelor's in psychology, in applied psychology with honours. I then went ahead and I finished my master's in industrial and organisational psychology from Mumbai University. Um, and then I did several diplomas in marketing, research, qualitative research, um, PR and advertising. I also did a diploma post grad diploma in um, organizational behavior and development 
and then I did two extremely different diplomas in yoga and dance therapy. Uh, at one point, I think I had three jobs, <laughs> which to a 20 year old is very fascinating, but I used to die because it was so tiring. But I just wanted to work to challenge myself because a lot of people say that you can't do more than one thing at a time and I think that that's ridiculous. I don't think anybody should be told that you can't do multiple things at one time and you can't, you like a jack of all trades and master of none, that's complete BS. And I think that I've seen a lot of people that I hold as inspirations. My mother and my dad, for example, they've done so many beautiful things and have done it fantastically well. So. I did all of these things and I urge everybody to explore and do whatever you, you're good at doing. I think it's it's great to explore, right? So I had three jobs. I was giving tuitions, I was, uh, I was working as a market research analyst and I was a senior trainer with Terence Lewis's dance company. Um, and then I think I dabbled a little in modeling because my brother at that time was a model and he said, you must go for this audition. So my first audition went down the drain because uh, I think one of my videos also has gone viral saying that uh, this casting director told me, I walked, didn't even walk in and he said that you're too gay for this advertisement. And I was like, you're selling toothpaste and gay people also brush their teeth. You know, what do you mean you're too gay for this toothpaste? So I was very sassy, right uh, since, you know, my teens and I think even before that, uh, blame my mother. But good, good that she was my mom and I used to pick this up from my mother. So, and then my second audition I got and then from there, you know, my TV career started. I became a host on television. I got all these awards and oh my God, people started loving me. I love it. I love everybody that loves me. I actually love everybody that hates me also because they still consume my content. But, um, you know, and then I realized that, oh my God, like this is, this is really happening. I'm becoming this person that I hadn't planned to become. But I still finished my degree and I was simultaneously working. So uh, as I said earlier, it's not like you can't do both. I think you should totally do whatever you feel like doing. And ace it if you can. Even if you can't, I think it's a learning process, right? So just chill. Um, don't take life so seriously. I think just have fun with it. Just live in the moment. And uh, that's what I was very, very happy doing. You know, and um, at the time we didn't have a lot of people that we could look up to in the entertainment uh, industry. But today when, when you see the difference between, I'm a millennial, by the way. Does that mean I'm old? Did I give my age up? Damn! But I just want to say that the Gen Z population, by the way, is so woke and lit. And I'm not too much older than y'all, but uh, I am substantially older than y'all but uh, from that 10 years back we didn't even know what content creation was we didn't know what social media was and today i think y'all have so much information on your fingertips literally on your phones i think it's beautiful that you have all this information available to you y'all have content available to you and y'all have the availability of creating content i think it's fabulous um that's why i think that y'all are more aware of so many things that we were not even we did, I didn't know I was trans till I was 30. So, so that's how my modeling career began. Then I participated in Mr. Gay World India in 2014. Um, and then I represented India at an international platform uh, at the age of 23. And I came back with uh, a world record because I won four subtitles. I won People's Choice. I won Mr. Congeniality. I won Arts and Challenge because I sang in four octaves and in two voices and I won uh, the Sports Challenge. Uh, so, the, you know, I was, when I came back, I was so, so happy and I was, of course, proud of myself, but uh, even happier because I represented my country. And uh, today when I see the Millennials uh, and the Gen Z, not the Millennials, Millennials to hum hai. Gen Z is so woke and so lit uh, and they know so much about so many things. When I came back, there wasn't so much social media, there wasn't so much content. I think social media has allowed people to consume content information and also create content. Also, the representation the community has received uh, in the years has been immense. And thanks to the work, the mainstream work of people like Faraz, Ansari, 
Onir, Apurva Asrani, Ghazal Dalival, Keshav Suri. We've come a long way, but there's still a lot of effort that needs to be put in uh, and uh, to accomplish an equal playing ground for queer people um, that identify under the spectrum of LGBTQIA+. Um, I hope to contribute to this by creating and producing my own content, singing, dancing, acting, of course. Um, and maybe one day we don't have to identify as gay artists or transgender artists, but just artists. Uh, I think that uh, everybody should be given the opportunity to explore their full capabilities. And this will only happen once I think we stop judging people for their gender orientation, where they come from, where they go to. Um, I believe, you know, it is my duty, I take it on myself, to pursue all my passion so that it could work and serve as a, a representation or an example for the generations to come. Uh, I used to identify as a gay man and now I identify as a transgender person. But I have come to understand that it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I'm an artist first and everything else later. I have realized my full potential at 30 and it doesn't matter what people think of me anymore because I've come too far from where I started and now it's, it's too late to look back and uh, be bothered about what people's opinion about me are. Um, I keep myself motivated through all these years by igniting that fire, I don't ever let it not burn and I think that to reach your full potential to make sure that you don't feel down, I think you need to have that fire inside you wherever you reach, however big you become in life, I think keep that flame inside you burning because only you can do it. There will be a lot of people that will try to put you down and uh, you know all of us have our qualms but we also have the zeal and it is up to us to encourage ourselves. Once you do that, you will definitely, and trust me when I say this, will be unstoppable. And with that, I just want to tell you that you have to and you must for your own good health, namaste another day. Every day. Thank you.